Crime and congestion pricing, the two big C's of the New York governor's race. We discuss both on the point. It starts right now. First up on this edition of The Point is Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez, an early proponent of liberalizing bail laws and giving people caught on the wrong side of the law a chance to turn their lives around. Mr. Gonzalez, thank you so very much for joining us today. I want to start with what seems like the daily headlines that somebody who committed some crime is now on the street where he can commit other crimes. Just today as we record, there was a person who tried to, uh, who was going to offer, being offered a bail uh, plea deal in Brooklyn, I'm sorry, a plea deal in Manhattan for 30 days for raping a relative and then he, while he was out he attacked five more people. When you see these headlines and you read these stories, like what's your reaction as a district attorney? Is the system um, are, are judges afraid to throw the book at some people? Should they be throwing the book at some people? Your thoughts? Yeah, I think we want to go back to what the goal of bail reform really was. And, and it was the understanding that in our criminal justice system, there were a number of people who were uh, being arrested, who were going to court, and really low levels of bail were keeping them incarcerated, $500, $1,000. Mm -hmm. And it became an issue of equity and fairness. Uh, they were being kept in uh, simply because they were too poor to pay bail. And so the legislature uh, attempted to fix that by reforming bail law. Uh, but headlines have definitely driven, you know, public perception of, you know, rising crime rates and have made people afraid, and we have to deal with that. So here's the question. What's your perception, and is your perception different from the perception that the public has when they read these headlines? Well, I've been in this job for over 25 years, um, so I have a long uh, look and have a lot of experience in looking at the numbers. You know, what we've seen um, clearly this year is that shootings and homicides are down. In my county, in Brooklyn, they were down, shootings were down by nearly 20 percent last year, but other crimes are rising, and as law enforcement officials, we have to deal with this uh, rising uptick in crime. So, you know, what's happening in the political campaign is that every single time there's somebody who, who commits a crime and is released and uh, uh, the Republican Lee Zeldin rushes to the site to say this is really terrible we have to have bail reform we have to have a special session of the legislature to deal with it. it does he have a point well the legislature has gone back since 2019 and has reformed bail three times and I think each time they've gone back and take a look at the data and made adjustments it's um, working better uh, so we have to continue to look at the data just this week, the a Division of Criminal Justice Services released some numbers, um, and it's showing that bail reform is actually working. It's keeping people out of jail so they can stay home with their families and continue to work, um, and people are returning to court. Uh, but there is a so small subset of people who continue to take advantage of the system, get rearrested, um, or continue to commit crimes, and we want to make sure that we're dealing with that subset of people. So what has to be done to deal with that subset? Well, there's a number of things that have to be done, uh, particularly when we can uh, seek bail and it's appropriate to, you know, ensure they return to court. We have to make sure that uh, prosecutors are asking for bail and the judges are setting those bail. Um, judges do have discretion on a lot of cases. In, in terms of the most repeat offenders, I think judges need some more discretion on a very narrow subset of, of cases. Well, so here's the thing. The mayor of the city of New York and also the Republican candidate for governor keeps saying that um, judges should be able to consider dangerousness as, as one of the things, which is a st standard in 49 other states. Do you think that we should do that? Is that necessary? Is that a tweak that would make a difference? In those states, I think, where we can look at dangerousness, there's a different system. Um, and some of the, like, for example, our neighboring county of New Jersey, where they can look at dangerousness. A judge will make a decision on whether or not the person is either remanded or released. There is no bail. So we have to also take a look at what our system is. But I do believe that um, on a very narrow subset of cases, uh, we want to make sure that judges have the opportunity um, 
to really look at the character and the history of, of a person who's being accused of a crime. So you're basically saying the legislature should consider dangerousness in certain cases? Well, it's not necessarily dangerousness, it's the history. A person who's a repeat offender, um, right now, if that case came to court and it's not a bail eligible case, the judge could not issue bail. We have to wait for that person to reoffend to then look for bail. Do you think that judges are a little bit afraid to impose bail, that they're afraid that they're going to be on the wrong side of what the law is? I think judges are a complex thing. Some of them are appointed, some are elected. I think they try to do the right thing under difficult circumstances. Bail decisions are often made in, you know, 60 seconds or less. So here's the question. Some people think that maybe there should be some changes to the system, things that we haven't talked about. For example, should there be increased penalties for people who loot stores? Yeah, I think we need to make sure that our criminal justice system is running 100%. And when we talk about rising crime rates, um, we sometimes forget that all of the institutions in our city were disrupted because of COVID. That includes our criminal justice system. We have backlogs and we have people who have not faced accountability because those cases haven't moved forward. We have to focus in on that. And then we have to continue to track data to make sure we're moving forward. But I will say that I think I think that bail reform has made the criminal justice system more fair um, and we have to continue to support those kind of efforts. Well, you know, you were at the forefront of trying to bring changes in Brooklyn, at least, uh, to bail reform so that people who, even younger people who may have been, as I said in my open, on the wrong side of the law, could have an opportunity to get on the right side of the law. Mm -hmm. How has that worked out for you in Brooklyn? So I have the experience to judge this. You know, there were common sense things I did in my office which was if we were not going to seek incarceration, we shouldn't be asking for bail, um, looking at things that make sense. Diversion programs. Diversion. And also, I think, different than currently under the law, you know, my office pays a lot of attention to who the offender is, and right now our bail laws really is based on what the charge is. And I think we have to also focus judges on who is before them when they make that bail decision. So is that really hard to do, and is it something that you think you do better in Brooklyn than in the other um, four boroughs because you seem to have a better record of it. Well, we have more experience because we started to uh, institute bail reform way before the rest of the state um, passed it. And so I think my ADAs have more experience and the judges in Brooklyn have been thinking about these issues you know, a longer time. So do you think that the, that maybe when the governor has said that maybe judges need to be instructed more on the law changes, that maybe that's a good thing and that could really help them in terms of making better decisions? I think everyone should always be refreshed on the law and the law has been changed a few times. And I listen, I often, um, when a case comes before my office, I'll ask, um, is this a bail eligible offense? Is there anything that would make this eligible? Uh, and, you know, we should do that. We should make sure that everyone one is trained on the, on the law. The law has changed three times in less than two years. So how do you feel about the public outrage, the public fear that crime is out of control? Do you think it's misplaced? I don't think people's perceptions, how they feel is misplaced. But I think when you look at the data, you see that the data um, does not put us back into the 80s or 90s, um, that people um, have been, really because of the political landscape and because of all of the attention on crime by the media, uh, people are rightfully fearful. And on top of that, there is upticks in crimes. We have to acknowledge what really exists. But in terms of overall crime, um, I don't think this is a runaway ship. We're going to have to leave it right there. Up next, the man who makes the trains run on time, MTA head, Jan Lieber.